In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to paint the blue power armour of the Ultramarines, white helmets and any other details you'll need to get painted on your Terminators. Welcome to Tabletop Ready, my name's Michael and in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to paint some Ultramarine Terminators. Any brushes and paints I use in this tutorial, I'll link in the description as well as show them on the screen when I use them. If you enjoy my content, I would love for you to give this video a like and let me know in the comments below. It really helps get my content out to more people. And if you want to help support the channel and what I do, you can become a channel member or you can join my Patreon which I'll also link in the description. I really do appreciate any help and support and it goes a long way to creating all the content on the channel and it also allows me to keep making improvements to the quality of the videos I make for you. And I really massively appreciate the continued support from these amazing people who have made this tutorial possible. And I want to say a massive thank you to Jirayu Arwachana Khan, who has recently become a supporter to the channel. Thank you so much. Before we even get started, it's important that we think about how we can assemble our miniatures to make painting them easier. And we can also think about what colour we want to undercoat them. I've built my terminators and sub-assemblies to make painting them easier, and so we can get to some of those hard to reach places you wouldn't normally be able to get to if they were fully assembled. I have a tutorial on the channel if you want to see how I do it. After I've finished assembling the terminators, I undercoated them using McCrack Blue Spray, as this is going to help when it comes to painting that blue Ultramarine's power armour. Terminators have always been my favourite unit. I love their design, and they're probably the most iconic unit within the Warhammer 40,000 universe. So I really want to show you how to paint these to a high standard that we can be really proud of once we're finished. Through this tutorial, I'll be showing you all the techniques and steps that you'll need to get your Terminators painted. And to make it easier to follow along with, I've split the tutorial up into different chapters. In this first section of the tutorial, I want to take through the steps to painting the Ultramarine's Terminator armour. The first thing we're going to do is to paint a base colour for our Terminator armour which is going to be McCrag Blue for the blue armour of the Ultramarines. I know we've already started with an undercoat of McCrag Blue, but you'll find that the colour from the sprays doesn't really match the colour from the pots. So it's always a good idea to paint a base colour first, so we know we're getting the actual colour we're after. And whenever we're painting, it's always a good idea to thin our paints first, and I find an equal amount of water does the trick. As well, I like to remove some of the paint from the brush on some paper towel first, giving us more control over how much paint is deposited. Make sure to keep your brush moving and try not to go over any areas you've already painted to prevent creating any unwanted texture whilst the paint is still drying. And when you're doing covering an area, because we thinned our paint, you'll notice it hasn't covered very well. But that's okay, as we can repeat the process and paint another layer. We want to paint in multiple thin layers to build up to a solid colour without losing any details on our miniatures. Just make sure to let each layer completely dry before painting another one. It's really important to practice these very basic fundamentals of applying paint to our miniatures because it really does make a difference to achieving a nicer finish. Now we have our base colour done, I want to use some bad and black to paint the ribbon under the armour. I want to do this now because I know it's going to get messy getting into all those smaller areas and we don't want to mess up any area we may have already painted. We can neaten up any areas where we're messy using McCrag Blue, which would have been very noticeable if we had just left it the McCrag Blue undercoat colour. I think we're now ready to get started on painting our Ultramarines Terminator armour. One of the first things we want to work on is creating definition to help bring out all those details in the armour. And at the same time, we can create some interest, helping to make some of those panels look less flat. Let's start with some Cantor Blue, and what we're going to do is to create a glaze. And to do this, we want to thin the paint down more than normal with two parts water to one part paint. This is going to make the paint more transparent, helping to create smooth transitions. We're using this Cantor Blue glaze around the lower legs and feet, and anywhere else we think would look good. Usually we'd apply a glaze in an even thin layer, but for our terminators we want to create some texture, 
So to do this I'm using the brush to stipple the glaze onto the area. We can build up the strength of a glaze applying multiple layers. Just make sure to let each layer fully dry first. When you're happy with how the Cantor Blue looks, we can work on darkening our texture gradient using Night Lord's Blue and the same process of stippling. And to help smooth out our transitions, we can go back in using a Cantor Blue Glaze and a McCrag Blue Glaze to make sure we're happy with everything. Glazing is a technique that you'll see a lot of high level miniature painters using because of how powerful it is when it comes to creating smoother blends, tonal variations and interest across our miniatures. So it's definitely worth practicing. The next thing we're going to do is learn how to use a recess shade to bring out all those details. For our recess shade we use a Night Lord's Blue and we want to apply this directly into any recesses to help bring out any features and details in the armour. This is a more controlled way than an overall wash so we don't affect any base colours we may have already painted. Take your time doing this and you'll be able to see how it's brought out all those details and features of the armour. Remember, we're allowed to go back and neaten things up along the way if you need to. We've been learning a lot of different techniques whilst getting our power armour painted, but there's still one more technique that I do want to show you and that's highlighting. I really want to go into some detail about highlighting and the different stages we can do to really make the armour stand out and impress everyone who sees it. First of all I like to keep a brush separate just for highlighting as I know it will be up for the task whenever I need it. As well I don't tend to thin the paint down as much as I normally would as we're not looking to paint multiple thin layers and we want that strong colour. Again remove excess paint from your brush on some paper towel to prevent those thick blobby lines. The first highlight we're going to do is called a chunky highlight and for this we use an outdoor guard blue. This highlight wants to be quite a thick line so we can still see it once we've painted our finer highlights after this. Spend some time painting this highlight along any edges as well as on any raised details and areas. And once you're finished you should see how it's helped to bring out the shapes and details on the armour. Our next highlight is called an edge highlight. I'm using Calgar Blue and this is used on any edges and to continue bringing out any details. To make this easier we can angle our brush against any edge and run it along that edge to create the highlight. For the areas we can't do this then we just need to take our time painting thin lines where we want our highlights. I would say highlighting is the most important technique to practice and get good at. Not only does it improve the look of our miniatures, but it also helps to improve our brush control and hand-eye coordination, making us better painters overall. Let's continue highlighting with a fine highlight using Fembrizian Grey, and we can use this to emphasise any areas and edges we want to be more prominent. The last highlight we can do is a spot highlight using blue horror to paint little dots on all the corners of the armour where light would be more focused. Now we've done with all those stages of highlighting, hopefully you can see what a difference it's made. You could stop here and say the power armour is finished, but because we've put so much work and effort into making it look as good as we can, let me show you a couple of other things that we can do. One of the first things you can do is to mix an equal amount of Abaddon Black and Ronox Hide. Paint this into some of the recesses around the feet to give the impression of dirt built up in these areas. The other thing we can do is to paint little scuff marks and scratches around the armour using Calgar Blue. And I find not having much paint on your brush really helps with this. And make sure to take your time building it up slowly until you're happy with how it looks. So even though we're painting our Terminator armour the blue of the Ultramarines, the same steps and techniques can be used to paint other coloured armour as well. It's just a case of changing the colours that are used. Let's finish this first section, finishing up the ribbon we started at the beginning of the tutorial. To finish the ribbon between the armour, let's start with the highlight of Veshin Grey. We can then use Administratum Grey to emphasise those raised areas. Now we finish painting the armour on our Terminators, 
you should have a better understanding of the techniques we can use moving forward. In this section of the tutorial, I want to work on getting all those silver and gold details painted, as well as their weapons. I know we've gone through a lot in the first section of this tutorial, but it's important for me to show you the skills and techniques we use to paint our miniatures. And you don't even need to use as many stages or as many colours. I'm just trying to show you what's possible. And you should always only do as much as you feel comfortable doing. So with that said, let's see how we can get these metals painted. To paint any silver details on our terminators, start with some iron hand steel for our base colour. Next apply some non oil shade to these areas to create definition. Finish any silver details and features, highlighting them with Stormhouse Silver. So there's two ways we can paint gold for our terminators, both decorative gold and more functional gold like bullets. Let's start with a more tarnished gold for any bullets using Retributor Armour. Create definition using some Reichland Flesh Shade. And then finish any bullets using Retributor Armour again to lighten those raised areas. For the more decorative gold like the chest eagle and any trinkets, start with some liberated gold. Again we can apply some right and flesh shade to create definition. To finish the more ornate gold details, let's mix an equal amount of liberated gold and stormhouse silver. Use this to paint the raised areas, making sure not to cover up any of those already shaded recesses. As well as painting all the gold and silver details in this section, I want to show you how we can paint all the weapon casings and see how we can achieve that muzzle burn effect. To paint any weapon casings, I would start with some Abaddon Black for our base colour. We can then use Corvus Black for our chunky highlight, Dawnstone for an edge highlight, and then finish up with a spot highlight using Administratum Grey on all those corners. And if you want to create that muzzle burn on the Gatling Cannon, this can be done really easily. First using some Druki Violet, and once that's dried we can use Drakenoff Nightshade. Let's finish up this section painting all the rivets on our terminators using Stormhost Silver. There's still plenty of details to get painted on our terminators, so let's work on some of those other details you see around the armour. I now want to show you how to paint some of the other details around the armour, including the Crux Terminatus and all those purity seals you see everywhere. To paint any Crux Terminatus, let's start with some grey here first of all for our base colour, making sure to get that solid base colour we can then work from. To help define the shape of these features, we can first use an Administratum Grey Glaze in the more shallower areas of detail. Once you're happy with how that looks, we can use Dawnstone as a recess shade. If you need to, neaten everything up with some grey here. To finish any Crux Terminatus, use White Scar to highlight. There's a lot of time and effort going into painting these Terminators, so don't expect to be able to sit down and get them finished in just one sitting. To paint a unit of 5 of these, it could take anywhere up to 2 weeks, but it will be worth it, and once you're finished, you'll have some amazing looking miniatures. There are so many purity seals around the armour, I really should show you how to paint them. Let's get the wax seal done first, starting with some Screamer Pink. Apply some Norn Oil for definition, and then using Screamer Pink again to lighten any raised details. Finish any wax seals with some Pink Horror to highlight. For the parchment part of the purity seal, first start with some Zandri dust for the base colour. Apply Reichland Flesh Shade creating our definition. Now we've created the definition, let's work on building up those lighter areas using some Ushabti Bone. And then Pallid Witch Flesh can be used to highlight. When the actual purity seal is finished, we can really impress people with some writing on them. For the writing, let's use an equal mix of a bad and black and Ronox hide to paint little squiggly lines. 
Treat this as if we're edge highlighting. And I find positioning the purity seal so I'm painting from top to bottom rather than from side to side really helps. With those details now finished, it's time to finish our terminators and get those helmets painted. This is the final section of the tutorial where I'm going to show you how to paint a checkered pattern and finish those helmets. I've done my best to try and show you how to paint everything on your terminators, but because there's so many details I've not been able to show you everything. And for anything I've not been able to show you, I will cover in a short tutorial on the channel, so make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out. If you want to paint a checkered pattern in places, we want to start with a light colour first which is going to be Corax White. When you're done you want to use your second colour, here it's McCrag Blue to mark out a grid. When you're happy with how it looks, fill in every other square. And it doesn't have to be perfect because now you can take some time neatening everything up. You could stop here if you want to, but we can take it a bit further with a gradient. So let's use a Femrisian Grey Glaze to do this. And then a Corax White Glaze could be used to make the transition smoother. And because we already marked out our checkered pattern, it's easy enough to repaint those McCrag Blue squares once you're done. We can also use McCrag Blue and paint little marks and scratches, scuffing up the white squares. When you're happy with everything, we want to edge highlight the area using Blue Horror to finish our checkered pattern. You don't want to highlight the squares as these are painted on and have no edges. When it comes to painting the white helmets, let's start with some Ulfman Grey for our base colour. It's a nice off white colour that we can shade and highlight. To achieve that bluish hue in the white of the helmet, we can use the Femrisian Grey Glaze in the shallow details creating definition and changing the tone of our white. We then want to use Femrisian Grey as a recess shade to deepen those deeper recess details. And once you're done, we're probably going to need to neaten everything up using Ulfwin Grey. Before finishing up any helmets using White Scar as an edge highlight. To add interest to the helmets, we can use some Ronox Hide to create chipping on some of those edges. The last thing to get painted on our terminators are going to be the eye lenses in the helmets. Being careful not to ruin the white of the helmet we've just finished, let's first paint the areas for the lenses using Corn Red. Next use some Norn Oil, again making sure to be careful. After that we want to get lighter towards the inside of the lens using Mephiston Red. Now paint a line of Fire Dragon Bright along the bottom of each lens. And finish our lenses painting a dot of white scar at the top and inside corner of each lens. With the helmets done I spend some time getting everything put together. I've absolutely loved painting these terminators and I'm really glad I went all out to achieve something I can be really proud of and I only hope I've been able to help you do the same. So let's see how they turned out. Our terminators are now finished and I hope I've been able to give you the confidence and knowledge to go away and get your own painted. I've got plenty of other tutorials on the channel, including how you can paint some of the other Space Marine chapters. I really enjoy making these tutorials and I hope you find them useful. You can really help the channel by liking the video and commenting below. You can also support me at Patreon, which makes a massive difference in helping me make these tutorials. Make sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss out on future content and I'll see you in the next video.